everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. In today's episode, I'm going to go through my week 15 NFL power rankings. There were a lot of crazy games, a lot of crazy results over the weekend in the NFL, which means we're going to have a lot of changes in this week's power rankings. So there's a lot to talk about. We're not going to waste any time, so we're going to jump right in. As usual, guys, we're going to start off with my bottom five teams, and then we'll move into my top 10 teams. And coming in at 28th overall, fifth from the bottom, we have the LA Chargers. They are four and nine on the year. They just lost last week to the Denver Broncos. Justin Herbert is officially out for the rest of the season. And the big question with me when it comes to the LA Chargers is how is Brandon Staley still their head coach? It feels like ever since he's been there, they've been consistently underperforming and I feel like it's just high time that they make a change. Perhaps a guy like Ben Johnson, one of the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, but you just have so much talent there that they should be competing arguably for Super Bowls and they just never look quite as good as you think they should. Man, they got to change things up in LA. And now coming in at number 29 in my power rankings, we have the New England Patriots. They are at 3-10, and 10, and they are up a number of spots compared to last week. The Patriots beat down on the Pittsburgh Steelers. A really nice win on Thursday night football. Bailey Zappi actually looking competent compared to the week before. Look, this team is still in my bottom five. They are still not a good team at all. But the Patriots responded well to a team in the Pittsburgh Steelers who are fighting for the playoffs in the AFC so a really nice job there by the Patriots and they move up uh, four spots in my rankings and now coming in at number 30 in my rankings we have the Arizona Cardinals the Cardinals three and ten on the year they just had a bye week next Sunday they're coming up against the San Francisco 49ers they will be hosting the Niners now I do think ever since Kyler Murray has come back from injury that they've been a lot more feisty that they've shown a lot more fight they're a lot more of a dangerous team than before however this team still severely lacks talent you would like to think the Niners should take care of business but you just never know in the NFL Kyler Murray is one of the more exciting players I think at least in the NFL to watch as him scrambling around he's not afraid to sling the ball and uh, the Cardinals I do still think they have a relatively bright future with their own first round pick they have the Texans first round pick and they'll have a ton of cap space to work with and at number 31 in my power rankings we have the Washington Commanders they are four and nine on the year they also just had a bye week you look at the commanders and they're in a really interesting place because they have so many really good weapons right now sam howell has played i think pretty well this season all things considered his first year as a full-time starter they have players on the defense but then they just traded away everybody montez sweat chase young so you're kind of wondering are they rebuilding are they kind of happy where they're at I think they're maybe going to be leaning a little bit more towards a rebuild, but they just have so many good players on the roster. Ron Rivera, don't think he's the future in Washington, but uh, Commanders, they started the year pretty good, but the last maybe two months, they have been dreadful. So not a good look for the Washington Commanders. And coming in at number 32 and bottom of the power rankings, this will not be a surprise to anyone. It is the Carolina Panthers. They are 1-12. They just lost badly again to the New Orleans Saints. And this team is just a mess. I think they, and what they will be doing in the offseason is just new coaching staff completely i think they're gonna have to make some big time changes on the roster um spend some money in free agency do they keep uh, brian burns on the roster that's gonna be interesting to see but i think you're gonna see wholesale changes in carolina which doesn't really bode well for Bryce Young. After one year, you have an offensive-minded head coach. He gets fired midway through the year. Now you're going to have a brand new coaching staff. We'll see how it goes. I do think that he is a good quarterback, Bryce Young. I think he, well, I think he has the potential to be a good quarterback. But uh, overall, things in Carolina not looking so great. They are bottom of my rankings. And very quickly... Before we get into my top 10, let's give a couple of dishonorable mentions for teams that very well could find themselves in the bottom five next week. Going to kick it off with the Las Vegas Raiders. They lost arguably the most boring game in the NFL 
history. They lost 3-0 to the Minnesota Vikings. And um, the Raiders had a couple of good games with interim, you know, head coach Antonio Pierce. And this can happen sometimes when you have the that interim coach where they come in, they have a spark, then things fizzle out after a couple of weeks. And maybe that's happening here with the Raiders. The other team is going to be a dishonorable mention are the New York Jets. Zach Wilson actually looked like a competent NFL quarterback on Sunday. Can he keep that going? They have a big divisional game against the Dolphins. The Dolphins want to try and maintain near or above or at the top of the AFC heading towards the end of the season. This is a big test for Zach Wilson. He has four more games to prove himself. Does he get another year in New York? Does he get traded? We'll have to wait and see. But I do really like how Zach Wilson looked on Sunday. But there you have it, guys. Coming up next are my top 10 teams. And now let's get into the top 10 teams heading into week 15 in the NFL. And at number 10, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. They are 8-5, and five, and they lost to the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. I'm not going to get into the whole offside with Kadarius Toney, but the Kansas City Chiefs, they're down three spots compared to where I had them last week. And this team, and I've said it so many times, they just don't look like the same team. Patrick Mahomes looks more and more human as the weeks go on. Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in football, the best receiving tight end at least, and he continues to make plays. But outside of that, they are just lacking that number one receiver. And it just goes to show you how important it is to have that guy. You look at the defense, it's playing pretty darn well, I think. Probably one of the better defenses that Mahomes has had. But the offense looks out of sync. They just don't look like what we're used to seeing can they figure it out before the season ends that remains to be seen remember right now four games left they're only one game ahead of the Denver Broncos in the AFC West so they have a lot to play for in the remaining month of football for the regular season and at number nine in my power rankings and back into the top 10 we have the Cleveland Browns the Browns are also eight and five they had a really really nice win against the Jacksonville Jaguars here's the thing no one's going to be writing home about Joe Flacco however Joe Flacco is a competent NFL veteran you put him with a really really good defense and that is going to be a tough out for any team Jacksonville will absolutely attest to that. And I think the Browns can make some things happen. Joe Flacco, he's always had a big arm, not afraid to throw the ball down the field, mix that in with a decent running game and the strong defense. The Browns could be a sneaky, really tough team in the AFC come playoff time when the weather gets colder, you're outdoors. That's a team that you will not want to face come January. And at number eight in my power rankings, we have the Detroit Lions. They are nine and four on the year. They just lost to the Chicago Bears. They've lost two in a row. They very easily, besides for a Chicago Bears collapse two weeks ago, could have lost three in a row. Jared Goff had maybe his worst game of the season. The defense just continues to give up a lot of points. And I think that Detroit is maybe running out of steam a little bit. I do still think that they're a team that they really should win that division. And look, no team is going to want to go on the road in the playoffs to a team like Detroit where that offense can put up points. But Jared Goff may be crumbling a little bit under the pressure. We'll have to wait and see. But the Lions, they've just been falling and falling the last few weeks. Can they right the ship? We'll have to wait and see. They have a big time matchup against the Denver Broncos coming up on Sunday. And speaking of the Denver Broncos and newly into my top 10, we have the Broncos. Look, the Broncos are seven and six and their season started so badly. Go back to my old power ranking videos. I had them in the bottom five a number of times, but lately they've just been playing so darn well. Outside of a loss to the Houston Texans, they've maybe won six games in a row. Russell Wilson's looking better. The defense is coming alive too, which is interesting because they let go or they traded away Randy Gregory and Frank Clark and but it's just they're playing really well as a team and I think Sean Payton look it took them the first maybe couple of months of the season but they're finally riding the ship and Denver looking like a really really solid team and they will challenge for the AFC West they're going to battle all the way down there and mile high not an easy place to play so Denver really impressing me here the last month or so 
into my top 10. And at number six, we have the Buffalo Bills. Also seven and six on the year. They catapulted right up in my top 10. They were not in my top 10 last week with a big time win against the Kansas City Chiefs. Josh Allen making plays happen. The defense doing as much as they can do to slow down a guy like Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense. You like the way the offense is looking. James Cook had a really good game for Buffalo. And I think this is another team. If they can maybe, they're only two games behind Miami in the AFC East. And I believe they play each other one more time. So you never know who's going to win that division. And we all know going into Buffalo can be pretty darn difficult come January. But the Bills looked really good against Kansas City, guys. And coming up next, we're going to have my top five teams in the NFL heading into week 15. Alrighty guys, and just before we get into my top five, let me give you very quickly a couple of honorable mentions for teams who could find themselves in the top 10 next week with a good weekend of football. Number one, the Jacksonville Jaguars. The last two weeks have not been pretty. Can Trevor Lawrence get a little bit more healthy? Can he put up some wins? The Jaguars just about holding on to the lead in that AFC South. Speaking of the AFC South, you have the Houston Texans, a really bad loss to the New York Jets. I did not see that coming. CJ Stroud looked awful, looked like a rookie who just wasn't really sure what was going on, looked confused and had a bad game. Overall though, CJ Stroud gonna be rookie of the year. I don't think there's really any question about that. One other team very quickly to mention are the Cincinnati Bengals. Jake Browning playing pretty darn good football. It helps when you have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. However, let's give credit where it's due. They're playing well. The defense is playing with a lot of energy, a lot of confidence, and it's good to see that they did not throw in the towel once Joe Burrow was announced that he was out for the rest of the year. Now let's get into the top five. And at number five, we have the Miami Dolphins. They're nine and four on the year. They just had a very bad, devastating loss to the Tennessee Titans. They were up by 14 points with about three minutes to go and they blew it. Now I do think if that situation is played out a hundred times, I would say maybe 97 times, the Dolphins probably finish that with the win. Some really bad plays, some breakdown and coverages. I still think the Dolphins are a good team, but are they a great team? That still has to be answered. You look at their upcoming schedule, it's not easy and they could very well lose number one spot in the AFC East. So they have a lot to prove in this next month of football. And at number four in my rankings at 10 and three on the year, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. Back-to-back -back bad losses. Sure, they're against two really, really good teams, but before that, Eagles were 10 and one and they were knocking off some really good teams. So it is a little bit concerning to see the defense giving up so many points. The offense not being able to score like we're used to seeing. Are there troubling signs in Philadelphia? We'll have to wait and see. They do have a tough game though this Sunday, going into Seattle, into that stadium, never easy to play in. And Seattle are fighting for their playoff lives. So this is a big test here for Philadelphia. Can they right the ship after two bad losses to really good teams? And at number three, and one of the teams that the Philadelphia Eagles lost to, we have the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys 10 and three on the year. They just had a really, really nice win against the Philadelphia Eagles, and they move up two spots in my rankings. The offense is firing in all cylinders. The defense is making plays. Micah Parsons is flying all over the place. Deron Bland is making plays. The offense, yeah, they're putting up points and a really impressive win against Philadelphia. If they lost that game, they'd be two games behind. They would have no tiebreakers at all with Philadelphia. So this gives them a chance. They could absolutely come away with not only the NFC East title, but potentially the number one seed after getting a big win. Their schedule, not the easiest either, but I think that they have a chance to just be one of the elite teams. And they are one of the elite teams in the NFL, clearly, because I have them at number three in my rankings. And at number two in my rankings, at 10 and three, we have the Baltimore Ravens. They had an overtime win against the LA Rams. That game was crazy. Lamar Jackson looked really, really good. Making plays with his legs, of course, but also doing a good job slinging the football. Zay Flowers, Odell Beckham making some big time plays. Isaiah Likely at tight end as well. The defense is really good despite giving up 31 points to the Rams. I still think, look, the Ravens are one of the best defenses in the NFL. Baltimore, not an easy place to play. 
they are, to me at least right now, the class of the AFC. Every team is looking up to them. And I think that Lamar Jackson, if he can continue on this trajectory, they could very well find themselves playing in the Super Bowl this year. They are going to be just really, really tough for anyone to beat. And at number one in the rankings, guys, we have the San Francisco 49ers. Of course, no change from last week. We had a really solid win against the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks, again, they are playing for their playoff lives. They had a couple of extra days rest compared to the 49ers heading into this matchup. And I thought Drew Locke played pretty darn well. He did have a couple of interceptions. However, I thought they were really, really competitive. Didn't make it easy at all for the 49ers. Eventually, I think just the talent that the Niners have was able to overcome the Seahawks. Brock Purdy, another really good game. You know, career high, 368 passing yards. McCaffrey's just doing his thing. Debo, a great game. The defense just did a solid job, especially going up against a guy where you just have kind of no tape to work off of. Plus, multiple injuries. No Eric Armstead. Very early in the game, Mooney Ward gets hurt. Then you look at Javon Hargrave goes out. You're talking three, four starters on the defense missing time in that game, and they were still able to play really well and eventually only gave up 16 points. So the Niners are the best team, I think, in the NFL. You get some of those guys back defensively, and I think it's, you know, it's there's just no limit to where this 49er team can go with this roster. You have the Arizona Cardinals this week. This could be potentially a trap game because the week after, you have the Baltimore Ravens. You cannot overlook the Arizona Cardinals. We... The Niner fans, we know how important it is to have that home field advantage through the playoffs. Let's take care of business against Arizona. But there you have it, guys. Those are my power rankings heading into week 15. Of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and feel free to share your power rankings. And of course, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me and why, love to have those conversations. If you enjoy the content, drop a like on the video. Feel free to share this video all over your social media. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This Sunday, we of course will be streaming the game 49ers at the Arizona Cardinals on this channel. You definitely don't want to miss that. And just before I go, and before I say my two things, I just want to say a huge shout out to all of you guys for all the continued support on the channel, for hitting 3,000 subscribers, which is just insane to me. And I can't thank you enough. But here we go, guys. You know I'm going to say two things before I head on out of here, and that is the butt counts, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.